And we're live. Great, cool. Hey everybody, I'm gonna wait for us to build an audience and I'm also gonna share this video on my own Facebook page. This is Seth, by the way. Hi. <laughs> um, turn the sound off this. Seth Mears was watching. Uh, okay. Um, hey guys, so as you can see, we are here with uh, some watches today instead of cars, which is um, pretty interesting. Um, these are actually some a uh, couple of brand new watches that have come out from the Giorgio Piola collection. And you might be asking at this point, uh, why are, who's Giorgio Piola? <laughs> uh, or why are, we, why are we doing this at Motor One, right? So um, as you know, uh, Motor One is part of a, a, the Motorsport Network. Um, our big sister site is a, is a racing and motorsport site called motorsport.com. Really awesome, fantastic editorial. If you guys love racing, you should check that out. Um, but one of the, one of the um, people that they really feature on motorsport.com, and occasionally you'll see some content on Motor One as well, is Giorgio Piola, who's a sort of legendary Italian um, artist, designer, and illustrator, right? He does these really, really fantastic technical drawings of race cars and has for years and years and years. Um, he's kind of a big, uh, you know, if you, if you follow F1 at all, I would think it's fair to say that you've, you've, there's a good chance that you've at least heard of Giorgio Piola. And certainly you've probably seen some of his illustrations. He's done a lot of, like I said, technical drawings for, um, uh, not only not only for motorsport.com, but in lots of other publications over the years, right? So, um, and, and my understanding, I, I guess, is that uh, he's also a, a watch enthusiast, as many car guys <laughs> tend to be, right? Um, so, so he's put together, he, he's got, we actually sell on a, another site of ours called motorstore.com. We've sold some of his merchandise for a long time. It's mostly t-shirts and, and clothing and stuff like that. But, um, but he's, we're really excited that he's come out with a couple of watches, his first ever with under the Giorgio Piola brand. And we're showing them to you today because they're um, really, really automotive themed. <laughs> I mean, you can take one look at this. This is the G5. This is sort of the flagship watch. And you can see like this is, you know, obviously it's a, a, a very automotive themed um, chronometer. Um, so we're, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna show you this watch. We're gonna show you a couple of the other ones that we've got uh, the Strat 5s as well, which are um, also very cool. Um, and talk about them, just sort of take you around uh, the watches because we're excited to get our hands on them for a couple of days anyways. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, Jake's behind the camera, by the way. Uh, so we're going to be uh, taking turns talking about these. And, and, and if you guys have questions, just on. let us know in the comments and we will uh, try and show you what you need to see. As always, yeah, yeah. We've got, like, like I said, we, so I, I, I really like watches. I've only been kind of interested in watches for the last couple of years. Um, but I know a little bit like that I can talk our way through. But if there are any, um, any like real, uh, watch enthusiasts out there, feel free to correct me if, I, if I'm incorrect about something um, or if you happen to notice something that, that uh, we're not talking about that you'd like to see or would like to know about, I'll do my very best to answer it. So um, so let's talk about let's this. size real quick. Yeah, sure. We're not uh, shadowed quite so badly Oh, absolutely. Window. Let's talk about this. So this is, the, again, this is the G5. This is the, this is the flagship watch. And I'm going to start by, like, as, as is always the case when you're buying, especially something high-end, like the presentation box is really important. So initially we were going to do an unboxing of these, but we decided just to start with the presentation box. But um, you guys can probably see this is a lacquered wood box. It's really pretty. Very Italian, obviously, with the red and shiny. It's got a nice heft to it when you pick it up. It feels like a solid product. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, I have pretty big hands, and you can see, like, <laughs> this, is, this is a big box in my hands. Um, it's got the logo, and the logo is raised, too, on the uh, – both the logo and the, um, the name are – are raised on just just a nice kind little detail there, for something yeah. when you're when you're spending a fair chunk of change on a, on a nice watch this is a sports watch and a tool watch but it's still it's it's fairly high end too so it's nice to be able to have something like this i would imagine um to to store it basically when it's not on your wrist um and then we open it up and we've got you're, you're gonna find like as we go through this that carbon fiber is one of the main <laughs> themes of what's going on here so you can see that's reflected just in the in the casework here. I'm gonna pull this guy off. This is just a little pad for shipping. Um, there's a nice place here you can store your warranty card. 
Um, you know, so you've got uh, the warranty card for the watch that can just go right in there. And then we've got an instruction booklet too that basically talks us through um, the complications on the watch, um, the movement and things like that. So, so if you owned this watch and had a watch collection, this would be lovely to store it in on your shelf, right? This isn't only for it to be shipped for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of funny. So I, I have a few watches, but I don't have <laughs> I don't have a lot of stuff that's high end. I know that guys, and this is an automatic watch too, which means that it's essentially, there's no battery, but it's wound by the motion of your of wearing it on your arm so a lot of people when they're really serious will have like a drawer or a watch box that has a little machine effectively that kind of turns this all the time so that so that it keeps it wound so that you can just and, and on time so that you can just pick it up and put it on when you decide now some so for some people who are real serious collectors they might have some a setup like that and I don't know what they do with the presentation boxes I know that they're really useful like if you're ever gonna if anybody ever like sells or trades this is definitely something that you want to have as part of, it's it's kind of part of the package right so it totally. makes it a big deal it's part of the whole experience but it also it'll look cool like in your in your closet on a shelf or, or where you keep your watches too if you don't if you don't have a special box so just on a little again like carbon fiber themed pillow so I think that the packaging around this is actually really cool it's very like you know again it's sort of a joke like you're definitely not gonna know that this is an automotive themed thing that this is a, a, a racing themed thing too so and um, hopefully we're getting some of our fans from uh, motorsport.com as well to check this out because I think they're gonna be really interested in this piece so um, so we, let's let's go through the basics. First of all, you can see. Well, actually, maybe you can't see. I'm, I'll, I'll, I've got a different watch on right now, but I'll set this down. But this is a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for. Um, this is not a piece for somebody with um, who typically wears a very discreet or sort of demure watch. Um, the overall size here, the width is. It's almost 50 on this one. This is 48 millimeters. Um, not counting the crown and it's also it's it's really kind of tall on your wrist too It's 56 and a half. Well, it's 56 and a half from lug to lug So from here to here also and then the height I believe I actually didn't write that down We can maybe check it out if somebody if one of our motor one friends is on the website I know it's on on there, but I want to say that this is maybe 14 millimeters tall as well so I wear a lot of sort of big dive watches and which have, you know, like uh, a bezel, like moving bezels and tend to be sit a little high on your wrist. And this one definitely um, sits up just like those. So, um, so it's a big, bold, um, the, even the opening itself, I think is, um, it's 36 and a half millimeters, just the, just the opening for the face, which is, there are a lot of watches. Yeah, especially some entire watches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These days people are tending, maybe there's more of a trend to buy smaller watches uh, and people are getting more into vintage, vintage watches too. So you might, you know, it's easy to find a vintage Rolex that's, um, that's under 40 millimeters, right? So it might just be the size of what you're seeing with the, the crystal here. Um, by the way, if you guys see some something weird on the crystal too, I can see it a little bit now. There is still a plastic film coating that I'm just not taking off for the moment um, because I'm not 100% sure they're going to let me keep it. So, so we've got to keep it a little protected. Yeah, so we're keeping now. it a little bit protected. But um, so, like I said, this is an automatic watch, um, and the so the guts inside it is is a movement called. Uh, an ETA 7750, which is also, um, for you watch guys out there, you might know it as uh, Valju movement. So this is a movement family, and this particular movement and, and then the larger family have been around for a really, really long time. Um, I think it's super cool because it's a movement uh, that gets used in a lot of automatic watches, and it's sort of, while it is, you know, it's really good, and, and uh, from a timing perspective, it's super accurate. Um, it's also, it's something that's not gonna, it's not overly finicky. It's definitely something that's been vetted over the years um, and isn't gonna really let you down if you end up wearing this a fair amount, right? So um, what does that mean? So the ba it's, got a, it's got about a 45 hour power reserve uh, on it and we've also got a couple of complications. The primary one being the, um, the, the chronometer, the stopwatch, right? So we've also got a tachymeter on the side, but, or around the edges as you can see, but the, the um, 
the sort of primary function for this, again, as a racing inspired thing, is the stopwatch. So I mean, those lap times or something. Like exactly, that. your split times are all in good hands with this this watch and this movement. So um, you can see that the we've got the red and uh, red and white sort of lollipop candy cane, whatever you want to call it, uh, seconds hand, and then we've got these great big pushers on the side, on either side of the crown. For to start the stopwatch, so I'm going to go ahead. again. Very motorsports inspired, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and start it so that we can uh, show the action a little bit, and then and then I'll let it run for a little while, and then we will show it go back to zero to zero out. So it's real simple. Start starts and stops it, um, and then the reset button will will zero it out again, um, which is pretty cool. So on the sub dials here, we've got. Again, we've got seconds for the timer being counted down by the, the candy cane hand, and then we've got hours and minutes, or minutes and hours rather, that are also being tracked here too. Um, I believe they said with this movement, it will auto, if you keep it running, it'll automatically shut off after two hours to, to, to save power, the timer will. Um, I've never really had a great need to time stuff <laughs> with, within seconds precision <laughs> over the course of hours and hours. Um, but if you did. <laughs> if you did, uh, just fair warning there. So, And then the sub-dial um, over here all the way to the left-hand side is the second hand for the watch itself. And you can see, I'm gonna actually pull, change the hour. I'm gonna set right now, but I'm gonna pull out the crown and change the time so that you can see the second hand a little bit better. Yeah, you can see it in there. Um, that it's got a nice uh, sweeping movement. It's also, um, we're gonna move this a little bit. It's been sitting in a box all night. I wore it for a little bit yesterday, but we'll talk in a minute about the band. The band is actually, needs to be customized uh, it needs to be be uh, fitted basically to the owner's wrist, and it hasn't been yet, so it's a little bit too big for even me to wear uh, right now. So there you want to take a little look in the back while you have it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. To... Yeah, so we're we're talking about the movement, and and hopefully Jake can get in there too. Again, there's a little bit of plastic, but you can see it's got a clear case back, so or display case back, um, and. So this this uh, 7750 movement again um, is is fairly common amongst Swiss uh, watches, Swiss automatics. And I, I should mention, I probably should have said at the top, but this is a Swiss made watch with a Swiss made movement, which is cool. Obviously you're getting uh, pretty high quality there. But um, so one, one of the things that they're able to do though to differenti differentiate it is how they finish the movement, right? Um, and you can see to start that, uh, of course, there's that big red rotor that just follows the, not only the, the theme of the watch, but also the Giorgio Piola theme. So With that Giorgio Piola logo on there. Exactly. Well. Yeah. We've got, we've got a logo on there and you can see the, you know, uh, it just looks really cool, obviously, as it moves around. And then you've got, the movement itself is actually really nicely kind of finished too. I don't know if you can see that, but you just have, um, just really nicely finished elements in there absolutely yeah and then then around the display case back you can see all the sort of typical uh you know like information about the watch that that you would expect to find back here um it's water resistant to it's uh a uh, uh, 100 meters 330 feet um 10 atmospheres i guess um Swiss made automatic, it's got the movement, um, the sapphire crystal, which we'll talk about. So the crystal is, again, you can't really see it, but it's there, it's a flat sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating on it. I'm not sure if the coating is on the inside and the outside or the outside or not both. Sure. Um, and then also we've got the, the, the limited edition number. So they're only gonna make 500 of these. And what do we have? We have 354 out of 500. Um, and then also that it's made with this super, super cool forged carbon case. Um, let me point out while I've got it turned around though too, because I thought this was awesome, a little Easter egg as soon as I saw it, that the, on the back of the rubber strap, not only do you have a little Giorgio Piola logo. Upside down there, but you can upside see Upside down. <laughs> and then you've also got a motorsport logo, which is cool for us too. Yeah, neat little Easter eggs to have we, those logos in it's, there. That's gonna, be, that's gonna be really fun. I don't know if anybody in the company is gonna end up with one of these. I'm sure one or two uh, will stay in house, but it's awesome to have the motorsport thing right there. So, um, but yeah, so this case 
is made out of forged carbon fiber, forged composite, basically. Um, and the effect of it, first of all, visually, is just super cool. It's got that, it's got kind of a swirl to it. From, from a ways away, it just looks like it's a really kind of dull matte finish. It blends in almost with the rubber. The rubber strap goes all the way up here uh, where the carbon lugs come out to the side. But when you start to look at the detail, especially from this side view, it's just super cool. It's, it's almost like a marble. And it, it recalls, you know, when you open one of those carbon fiber tub supercars that has exposed carbon on it, it really looks exactly like what you'd see in one of those cars. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I mean, the the idea too of, of having a forged carbon case is just so cool because, you know, you're talking about a lot, of, a lot of sort of like legacy technology in this watch in terms of, there are a lot of classic elements, again, like the automatic movement, the fact that it's made in Switzerland, um, even even the setup of the, of the uh, chronometer, right? But the... But the forged carbon is awesome because this is stuff that's just starting to get used in cars, really, like road cars right now, right? Lamborghini is making, has done a lot of stuff with forged carbon. Um, I was just out in, in Boston uh, the other day with Lamborghini. They're doing a, a big uh, uh, three-year tech technology program with MIT, and they're talking all about this crazy stuff that they're doing with carbon fiber. Um, especially, you know, the, the forged stuff can just be used in a lot of different ways than typical car, uh, um, woven carbon fiber that we're used to, right? Um, so the fact that the watch is built around this sort of carbon fiber chassis I think is super cool. What I was impressed about as well is it's a really smooth finish on the outside. It's not yep. like a rough, uh, you know, unfinished surface on there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's because it looks a little chalky, um, but it, it, it really is. It's super, super smooth. And, and I, the contrast here between the sort of bottom part, it almost looks like a gasket, but it's not. That, that red sort of satin finished red part um, under the bezel. Uh, and then the, the side of the watch itself and the carbon I think looks really neat. There, there are a lot of cool details on this watch and I think when I, to be totally honest, when I first looked at it, especially from the pictures, I was like, that might be a little bit too much for me. You know, there's a lot going on with the subdials and stuff. Um, and we haven't even talked about, you know, the, the most obvious, I think, um, automotive themed bit is the the brake disc like uh, bezel here which is this is titanium I think so the the rest of it like the whole watch itself other than the strap everything is at least the the watch head itself is carbon fiber titanium or aluminum so again it's made from real serious materials absolutely that's part of what gives it that heft when you pick it up but yeah you can see the sort of the cross drilled effects outside right to look like a brake rotor on a sports car yeah and and just the neat little like like lugs that are the hex nuts that are are holding it on it's just got a really cool technical feel i'm gonna i'm gonna stop this and reset it we'll do the reset thing so we can see everything go to zero. Oh no my plastic came off the back Nice. There you go. So it snaps back, and the seconds obviously snap back as well. Um, I don't know if there, if you guys have any questions. I don't know if. Uh... Yeah, I haven't seen any comments come in, but if there's something you guys want to know about these watches, just uh, let us know. Thank you to Jan and Chris and everyone else who's watching and sharing so far. But yeah, if you guys have questions and comments, just. Uh, Enter them in the comments section, and we will uh, try and get them answered for you guys. Yeah, for sure. And we've got um, we've got not only the us, but we've got people back home too. So again, if you have specific watch questions or questions about like the the watches that we're going to show you, we're happy to tell you more. Um, so I'm going to again. This is really big. So the the it's got a deployment clasp, which we haven't talked about too, which is great when you get it fit just for your wrist because it makes for a super easy on and off. Um, it just snaps together like that, and then each side unhooks. Um, so that's really cool, but as you would expect, because people have very different size wrists, it's huge right now. So it's set up, um, I, have about a, I have about a seven and a half inch wrist, and the, this is obviously like gigantic on me right now. So you, what, what you would do is, um, and this is fairly common too with rubber straps, is you take it into a jeweler basically uh, somebody that you trust, to watch, your watch guy, and they pull this thing off and they clip the, the silicone um, on either side and then fit it so that it just fits exactly where you, you want to have it. You can see those little holes in there to... Exactly, yeah, yeah, to move up. You can adjust where you want the, the ends of the clasp, clasp to be, and they, they just cut it so that it fits you perfectly, and then when you strap it on, it's great. But So I'll sort of fake it for right now because just to give you an idea of the size, like, again, I have a pretty big wrist, so it's a generously sized watch, and you tend to wear bigger watches, but it's not overpowering, I don't think. No, I mean, it's it's tall. It's hard to say without having it on. Um, I, it's fairly tall, like I said, on the wrist. Um, one thing I do like, well, oh, well, 
this is, I'm also, I put it on backwards probably because it's so big. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you're not going to, you're definitely not going to forget that you have it on. Uh, I don't know how much it weighs. I don't know that I saw a gram weight listed on, on the specs on the Piola website, but um, it, for all that it's carbon fiber and aluminum in there, it's still, it's still a big chunk of watch on your wrist for sure. Um, so that's cool. I actually like that. I like wearing big watches because I like the feeling of, I like a little bit of weight on my wrist and, and reminding me that it's there for sure. But this is bold in a lot of ways. I mean, it, it, you know, I have a feeling that this is something that if you wore it on a cars and coffee day or when you're going out for a drive, this is definitely something that another car guy is at least going to ask you about. Um, it's, it's kind of fun because of the, you know, this is, this is not a demure thing. It's probably not what you're going to wear to a black tie event, <laughs> but it's, again, it's a sports watch and a tool watch. So, and I, and I think it's one that will definitely be a conversation starter. And if you happen to get somebody who's, um, a, has seen a lot of Giorgio Piola's work, I think they're going to be really, really excited about it too. And, and at 500 units, it's going to be really special too. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Rolex makes thousands and thousands of watches every year. It's not likely you're going to run into someone else who has the exact same. No, I mean, you might, but you'll probably be at an F1 race <laughs> if you do, like, or, or at an F1 race in Italy, you'll be at Monza if you see another one. But, um, so yeah, so what else do we have here? We've got a day and a date window. Um, I can show you those moving a little bit. Again, we've got a really big signed crown, screw down crown. Um, it's not a dive watch, but it'll go, you know, it, it's good to 100 meters anyway, so that's deeper Way than I deeper ever than go. I ever dive. Yeah. <laughs> um, screw down crown, it just a uh, three position crown too, so we can uh, pull it out to do day date. Kind of see there. Mm -hmm. no. And then this way too. And it does have a really nice, I don't know, it depends on how geeky you get it, but the, the feeling, there's a really nice mechanical click as you're changing, especially the date window from one to the next. Just like we talked about with like volume knobs or switches in cars, you know, it's totally. that, the tactile feeling. Totally. And then you just pull it all the way out for the, to change the hour as well. So simple, basic, robust movement. Um, it's not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road and it's going to, you know, stay accurate uh, within a very reasonable number of uh, seconds per day, you know, or if not seconds per week. I don't know the actual accuracy on, on this one uh, on the 7750. But, but it's, a, it's a really well-known movement, and so yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, so okay. that's, that's the G5. Um, uh, so this one is 29... 50, I think, is what uh, is is the asking price for this guy. So, uh, about three thousand dollars. And again, that's um, it's it's sort of hard to say. This is a, <laughs> this is a discussion that I've had with you know, like I've had with my wife before. But I'm sure like people people who don't collect watches certainly or even don't even buy a lot of watches are like, oh, three thousand dollars is a ton of money to to spend on a watch. And don't get me wrong, three thousand dollars is is a lot of money for for most people to spend on a watch. That being said, um, for a Swiss-made automatic uh, watch, $3,000 is really kind of your point of entry. <laughs> um, so you're getting, I would say that you're getting a lot of kind of bang for your buck, even, even around that, that figure for this, just because, the, again, at the, the very rudiments are there uh, for something that would be a, a multiple thousand dollar watch, and then you have elements I just haven't seen a lot of before, like the carbon fiber. And it uh, is a limited edition as well, you know. Exactly, so, so. yeah. My guess would be that the, the people who, the 500 people who buy this, this is probably isn't going to be their first watch, and it's probably not going to be their only watch, right? I have a feeling that this will probably end up in a lot of closets of people who are collectors and happen to be F1 fans, and I think you'll really, really like it at that. Wear it to the race, wear it when you're driving a sports car, and I think that you're going to enjoy it a lot. So, um, again, if you guys have more questions about this or you want to see it again later, just let me know. I'm going to stick it back in the box for now, and we're going to open uh, the uh, Strat 5s, or Strat 3s, rather. Um, so these are actually, I didn't think, when I first saw the, that we were, there were two Giorgio Piola watches, um, and really these models come four total ways, right? Uh, I, I thought that I was going to be really interested in the G5 because I tend to like, uh, all the watches I have are automatics. I don't, I don't really have, I have one quartz watch. Um, and these are, these are Swiss quartz movements. These have a, a, a Ronda 5030 
uh, D quartz movement in it. Um, again, chronograph. I was like, I don't know. It looks more like a fashion watch and less like something that I would actually be interested in wearing. Um, but then I actually wore this one. I, I took the black one home uh, last night and I wore it uh, last night and this morning. And I'm finding myself really liking it a lot more than I expected to. Um, not that I didn't expect to like it, but I, I actually really, really liked having it on my wrist. I, thought, I think there are a lot of interesting things going on with this watch. And, and this one is, I think it's like, five, I can't remember if it's 560, 590? I think it's 595. It's a little, un, little, under, little under $600. Um, again, Swiss made. This is, I have to get a little... Uh, and if you guys do need more specifics on the specs or the, or the prices, there's a link on this Facebook post as well that you can jump to. to yeah. To the website. Hold on, I'm going to make Jake vamp for just a second. <laughs> Grab something. Uh, we can kind of show you guys the, the difference in the sizes here. Uh, and the presentation box obviously is a little bit different on these other watches, but you still get that really cool red accent. You've got the sort of the carbon fiber effect and the Giorgio Piola logo on the top. So I think these also are really, really nice presentation boxes, whether that's just when you unbox it for the first time when you own it or it's on your shelf in your collection, right? It's a really nice presentation. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. We, we kind of skipped over the box because I, I pulled this one right out, but um, but yeah, it's the same thing. Again, you're getting, this is this is a much more modestly priced watch. A lot of people will spend five or $600 on a watch, especially if it's something that they're really into. Um, and this is a cool one. Like the fact that it's got the carbon fiber effect and the red and the black and the logo on it. Um, I just think it looks really neat. It's not quite as nice as the gigantic lacquered box for the G5. Um, but you know, you're spending uh, a sixth as much. <laughs> so to a certain extent you get what you pay for. Sorry, I just grabbed this one because I had a little microfiber and this is a little smudged. Um, so you wore this black one and kind of really, really fell for it and really liked it. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. So again, we've got a, um, I've got, I'll start this one as well, although this uh, timer's already been going for a little bit. Same basic idea as the G5, right? But, but kind of done in a way that's, um, certainly it's gonna be more affordable just because it's a quartz movement as opposed to an automatic movement. Um, but it's actually, I think for, for $600, you're getting a lot, like you're getting a ton of stuff that's really cool in this watch. So um, one is, we've got this case, which is honestly as cool as the brake disc sort of effect on the G5 is, this to me is a little bit more of a, it's, it's impressive looking, but it's still a little bit more wearable, right? So the first thing that I like about it is that the, the case is made out of titanium. We've got both of the ones that we have are the brushed titanium finish, though I believe um, there's also a, a, a polished, I have to look at the actual language, but there's another kind of titanium finished case, right? This is really cool because one, it's not just straight up silver. If you look at it in a little different lights, it has sort of a kind of a goldish tone to it a little bit too. It's a little bit hard for you guys to see that on Facebook, but I can assure you that's true in real life. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so you've got this, this big chunky type, uh, uh, brushed titanium case, which is really cool. It's got a lot of presence on the wrist. Um, it's not so tall that if you're wearing something, you know, I've got like a, a sort of a tight fitting collar on right now, like, or if you're wearing a small shirt, it's not gonna slide really easily under a button down a sleeve or something like that, but it's also not gonna completely get in your way, right? It's, so it's, it's a little bit shorter than the G5 on the wrist, but still has a lot of like a good, a really good presence and a good feel. Um, it's also really, really legible. This, this glass or crystal, which is again, sapphire with an anti-reflective coating on it is gigantic. Like not only do you have a really good view of the tachymeter uh, meters on the side, um, but you definitely, you just have like a, a, a really nice view into the, the what's happening here. So it's very legible, really easy just to do, you know, the most simplest, telling of time. Especially <laughs> um, since you have quite a lot of complications and things going on in there, it's nice to be able to just glance at it easily. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it still feels sort of flashy, you know? Like, it, it definitely feels like something that you would want to wear if you're making a, a little bit of a statement. And that's because I think it, they do a really good job of 
blending the sort of matte elements on the outside, the really technical outside, with some higher polish, um, you know, flashier elements on the inside. Um, including including like a lot of color on the dial too. Even though the, the dial itself is mostly black, you've got reds and yellows in there that sort of set it apart. You've got the Giorgio Piola script with a little Italian flag, the logo at the 12 o'clock. Um, and then I actually think it's neat the way that the little round date window has been integrated um, right down there at four o'clock or just under four o'clock um, with the subdials too. So it's there's there's a ton happening, but it doesn't feel overly busy to me. You and know? again, kind of a motorsports color scheme and sure. you know, inspiration on a lot of these gauges as well. Yep, absolutely. Um, it also has a we'll look at the back too, but let me take this out. There's there's no lack of branding on this stuff <laughs> for sure. So we've got a rubber strap. This rubber is really soft. Um, it's, I actually thought it was silicone when I first put it on. I've got a couple of different rubber and silicone straps at home. Um, and this one is, it's not quite as soft as silicone, I guess, but it also, silicone has this, if, if anybody's worn it, has this ability to sort of pick up lint and dust sometimes too, which is not great. I feel like I'm brushing it off a lot. Um, whereas rubber straps don't really do that. Um, the trade-off tends to be that rubber straps are a little bit more stiff and they don't feel great to wear. But again, I wore this for about a day and I never really had any issues with the comfort too. So got another little Giorgio Piola logo there molded into the, into the rubber. And then this uh, buckle is really cool. It's a big chunky, bu chunky buckle also made out of titanium and also with a little logo on it too. So you get the same stuff here molded in, same stuff on the strap. We've got Motorsport and Giorgio, Giorgio Piola, of course. And then just a little Strat 3 with the logo, checkerboard sort of, or a uh, checkered flag, kind of a theme back there. Um, Really nice polished finish on that. Yeah, you can see the reflection of our iPhone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is also a limited edition, right? Yep, yeah, so it's a good point. So it's, they're going to make in total 250, they're gonna make 500 Strat 3s. So 250 of them will be the black with the black rubber, um, 125 in this uh, matte finish, and then another 25 in the, in the uh, shinier finish. Set this down here. And then same breakdown for the for the blue one, right? Uh, another 250 of these in total with 125 each of one of the cases. So, and that's part of what I'm saying. So again, like you're talking about a super, in, you know, each individual uh, colorway of these is actually gonna be a lot rarer than even the G5, right? Mm -hmm. So for somebody who's just a fan of, of the artist, or a, or a big racing fan, it's the same sort of thing. Like this, these are watches that I would love to grab if I'm you know, driving like a fast car for the weekend or going to a race or something like that. They'd be really fun to put on They're, because it's a little bit of a conversation piece. Um, and you're not in it for very much money on this one too. Um, so you're getting something that's super limited edition. It's gonna be rare. It means a lot to somebody who, who cares about the brand and you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to, to get this version. So. I actually think that this is like, in terms of a quote unquote compromise, I think this is a really nice piece. I think a lot of people are gonna, are gonna dig it. Uh, I'm just looking at the blue now too. What do you think about the blue, Jake? I, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a really striking effect. So you have that contrast with that sort of brushed effect case. Yeah, I like the black. The I'm black a, is maybe a little more formal. Yeah, I'm a black dial kind of a guy. Uh, I do like the blue dial quite a lot. I think. The, it's the the blue rubber is really strong to me, right? Totally. Like if you're if if you definitely have to be a guy who likes blue, but the but the contrast between the the titanium and the blue is is really nice too. So um, the black cool. one is probably a more traditional look. Um, I, th I think the blue face is really striking on the other one. Again, we've got the same setup with the pushers and the crown, signed crown, a little bit smaller than on the G5, but still really easy to grab a hold of. Just start and reset. So I'm gonna stop this one and we can do another back to zero on it. It's awesome to see the little sub dial rotate reset. back. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, that's so this is really also fun. Swiss made as well, just like the other one. Yep, yep. Again, Swiss movement uh, and, and Swiss manufacturer. It's just that it's a Swiss quartz movement. So you're automatically gonna go down you know, a big like price class because of uh, the quartz movement. And, and again, like for you guys who, who aren't huge 
uh, watch nerds, basically a quartz movement means that the watch has a battery that powers it. Whereas this the type one, that most of us wear on a daily basis. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. If you have a non-digital watch, if you have an analog watch, there's a really, really good chance that it's a quartz watch. That you have a battery that will last between really, I mean, there's a range, but let's say it'll last three to seven years, depending on the watch that you have. Um, you have to give it changed every once in a while, and they're insanely accurate. They're, they're way more accurate even than the best automatic, um, just by the nature of the technology. So it basically is, is, keeps perfect time all of the time, right? Um, so the movement is a little less interesting just because it's less exotic, but it is Swiss made if that, if that uh, matters. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the Strat 3. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I missed. Oh, we didn't talk about the specs on it too, because this, this is actually a little bit bigger. Um, and I'll throw this one on too. This is actually a 50 millimeter watch. So it's 50 millimeter um, from side to side, excluding the crown. It's 62 millimeters from lug to lug, which is huge. Yeah, so definitely bigger than the other one. Yeah, for sure. And it's and it's 40, it's got a 40 millimeter opening. So again, like a 40 millimeter watch for a lot of people is even a pretty big watch. So if so. you have really skinny wrists, this might overpower you a little bit, but for you it's probably about the right size, I yeah, would guess. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, even for me, it's it's really the, the, the lug width, lug to lug, not the, lug width but the lug to lug width that gets me because most of the time i'm used to a watch being like a lot of my watches are close to the you know i've got one that's 48 or something so they're close this way but not a lot of them are as big this way that like 62 is really long so you can it really like when you look at the ends of the lugs it, they they follow kind of the curvature of my wrist almost so that's about as big a watch as i could probably wear and and be comfortable with it anything else is going to just feel like i'm hitting it on stuff all the time. Um, but I will say that if you look at it like this, it, it's not standing up like super high either. You so, feel like you could fit it under a shirt or... Yeah, I mean, you it, you know, you, you you wouldn't have it under, if you have a really, really tightly fitting sleeve, it wouldn't fit under for sure, like a dress shirt or if you're wearing it with a, a suit or something like that. But, um, but it wouldn't be bad, it would be doable. It, um, it's just, it's a little bit too high for that. But for a sports watch, I think it actually wears and for the overall dimensions, I think it wears really nicely. So, yeah, this is the one, like I said, this is the one that I, I chose to, to take home and I, I can see myself throwing this on every now and again if it were, if it were in my closet, for sure. Um, what didn't we talk about? So again, if anyone has any questions, uh, I haven't seen any uh, comments pop up, so I apologize if that's just a technical difficulty, but if there's anything you want to know or see, uh, let us know and we will try to uh, check it out for you. Yeah, we've got... Um, and thank you to everyone who is watching as well and who shared this. Yeah, I know it's a little bit funny, like, again, you guys are used to tuning into us driving something and maybe we should be doing this in a car <laughs> to sort of brand them, but uh, we, were, we were really excited. We like it. We, we think... Uh, Motorsport Network does a lot of cool things. Like it's it's a it's a fun company to be a part of a lot of the time because there's always something like this happening. So um, as you know, Jake and I both are to a certain extent are into watches too. So when the when these came through and we saw that they were they were going to be available, we were like, yeah, we totally need to check those out and share them with you guys. So and with you know them being a Giorgio Pioli, you know, like like you said, we have both seen his illustrations and designs for years. Absolutely, and were, you know, yeah. Really, really excited to see these watches. Yeah, next time we need to get him to come through to the Detroit office to actually, uh, there we go, to actually uh, tell us what he likes or what went into the design. So these are called the. This is the Strat Three. Gotcha. These are both the Strat Three, and I don't know. I'll, I'll put it to you. Like to me, this is. There's a, a much more subtle automotive theme to these. Do you, do you think that's fair? I think so too. I mean, I think if you know what you're looking for and you you know maybe see some inspiration on some of the gauges that are there and the mm -hmm. colors, but it's not quite maybe so in your face as the other one. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that this is um, it you know it for any sort of sports dressy watch. You know? Yeah, it reminds me not in terms of the design because um, but but the what they're going for it reminds me a little bit of sort of what you see from like Porsche design, totally. where they do you know like first of all you're talking about rubber and metal for the most part you're using the same types of materials that are used a lot of times in automotive and less like the overt like this is again G five is very overt. Um, brake disc, like sub dials look like they could be gauges. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, like so it's materials and design and detailing on that watch is, is super automotive. Um, this one, I think if, again, if you know who Giorgio Piola is, you're gonna see this and you're gonna know probably there's a car guy uh, wearing this watch. 
but it's not it doesn't club you over the head with it either so um but it's still it's still definitely there i was just going to pull this out and sort of show we've got so this one we have a, a also a three position screw down crown again this is another 100 meter watch so you can totally take it swimming uh if you're if you're at the beach you can wear it to the beach that's why i really like sports watches and tool watches like this because you're able to do I actually think a, a chronometer has a surprising number of uses. I find even with dive watches, I'm using a, a diving bezel um, a lot just to when I'm trying to keep track of some little amount of time, some some piece of work that I'm doing that day. Um, and so you end up using it more than you would think too. It's more than just like, I mean, complications at the end of the day are kind of like gimmicks and reasons to buy watches. And they're super cool. It's why people get excited about watches, but you don't always need to have like a big practical use for them, right? That being said, I do think a timer is a, an especially it's practical probably the most useful one. Yeah, yes. for sure. So, um, and you have the date window on this one as well, obviously. Yeah, so, so what I was saying is I think that this one would be, this is more of a, could be more of a daily wear watch even even with the size because it can go in the water it's got a rubber strap that's not gonna bug you too much and it's not at, at 600 bucks it's not something that if you do first of all it's sapphire so it's not gonna crack very or scratch very easily but um if you do happen to like you know hit it on the catch your desk or something like that that you do all the time i think this is going to stand up really really well to, to daily wear it's pretty robust it's not too fragile that you can't wear it every day yeah yep for sure so yeah, we've got, I'm just moving, playing with the date window now. Um, three position crown, just changing the date. Let me pull it all the way out to change the time. I'll show you the, and it screws down nice and tight, really easy. Feels great. I like the sign crown too. I'm a sucker for a sign crown. A little hard to see uh, for those of you watching on Facebook, but yeah. uh, it is sort of etched in there. It's a really cool detail. Mm -hmm. you see that logo, you know, all over that it's on the band and the back of the case. And yep. yeah, really cool. And the pushers, if you are using the timer, they're just, they're, they're so chunky and easy to grab. You can't even really tell, but the fact that even they're, these are silicone and the fact that they're raised, the lettering is raised off of the pusher is a neat detail. It feels really nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, start, stop, reset it back to zero. Cool little sweep on that too. Very cool. There's also, this This is the, we didn't point it out on this one, but it's it's basically the same same setup, just switched around. So the second hand is in the sub dial there too. You can see it clicking away. And obviously it, well, maybe not obvious. Um, quartz watch, wheel, uh, a ticking second hand uh, is, is a dead giveaway that the watch is, is quartz as opposed to a smoothly sweeping hand is what you get when you've got a mechanical movement and not like an automatic movement. So, uh, but it's still, it's neat that it's in the sub dial because at the end of the day, you don't really ever need a second hand, but it's cool to see it move. <laughs> and unless you schedule your day by the second. Yeah. It's yeah. probably not. Yeah. It's just a cool effect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, I don't know. I, that's that's a lot of watch talk uh, for for motorone.com Facebook. So, thanks everybody. It looks like we had a pretty good audience hanging in. Again, I, I don't know if you guys are just uh, um, feeling quiet out there. You just don't have a whole lot of questions. But it, feel free to. If we're we're probably going to log off here in a minute. We we are super happy that everybody joined us to watch these. Um, but if you do end up having questions. First of all, there's a link. I think Jake put a link right at the top of the page to uh, the Giorgio Piola website. These are on sale right now. That's probably super important to mention. These aren't, these aren't uh, an early release or anything. Um, you can go and buy this watch today. So, um, and, and we totally encourage you to click through, check out the website, um, find out there are a lot of details and some nice photo photography of both the Strat 3 and the G5 there. Um, but get them while they're hot. They're again, they're super limited edition. So I'm, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to, uh, sell through these, but I know that we have three here, so <laughs> we're in okay shape. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions that can't be answered there, or you just want to know a little bit more, um, we'll try and get back into comments to find, to clean anything up. So feel free to ask questions there. Um, and there's probably going to be a post. I think we're going to end up downloading this and posting this to Facebook as well, which reminds me, Jake, when you stop this, make sure to download the high quality version of the video. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to, we're going to have a, a post on the watches on motorone.com as well. So uh, if you guys have hung around, but you want to know a little bit more or, 
a lot of people would probably just be able to catch it there. So that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody tuning in and we'll see you the next time.